The explicit personality is that aspect of personality that uh, you're aware of, and it's uh, your daily behavior, the, the emotions that you're aware of. The yeah. um, typical measurement system is self-report, as people fill out a uh, fairly long uh, set of questions, anywhere from 50 to 500 uh, questions describing their own behavior. It's called self-report. The implicit personality is not uh, cannot be measured by self-reports because you have no access to your implicit uh, personality. You're unaware of it. It's unconscious. And in the implicit personality are those things that would uh, cause one to, ex if they knew about it, would cause one to experience guilt, embarrassment, anxiety, things along this line. So it's protected. It's uh, hidden away, so to speak. And the, uh, the only way that it finds, uh, it surfaces, or is released, is the term we use, is uh, through the use of defense mechanisms, something to protect it. We developed a new measurement system that we refer to as conditional reasoning. And what we saw was that there's a uh, fairly strong interaction between the implicit personality and how people reason informally about life's events, how they explain events, how they attempt to predict what's going to happen in the future. And so this influences how they behave. We designed a new type of inductive reasoning problem that, that has multiple answers. The degree to which it's seen as logical is dependent on the personality of the respondent. The respondent doesn't know that. But the basic idea is that they engage in biases. They think these biases are logical. And so we write these by we use these biases to build the responses to the problems. As an example, is the aggressive person. And so when the people pick these responses, they see that they have solved the problem logically. But the issue here is is that people who are non-aggressive solve the problem one way, and people who are aggressive solve the problem a different way. Most people who are truly aggressive have an implicit desire to hurt others, do not know that they have that motive. The aggressive person does not see themselves as acting aggressively, they see themselves as engaging in self-defense. And I got into this uh, primarily because I was sick and tired of seeing people attacked in the workplace, and I thought that we could identify the types of people who are predisposed to engage in these attacks before they were hired, and get them into therapy, um, but not turn them loose in the workplace where they can prey upon other people. Years ago, we talked to the Army, uh, United States Army about this, and uh, one of their research psychologists said, "Well, aren't you going to, um, aren't you going to identify and disqualify our best soldiers?" And my response to that was, "You mean the people that rape, pillage, and murder on the weekends? Because that's what we're after." And uh, the, the less facetious answer to that would be that aggression in the psychological, psychiatric sense is a pretty serious thing. This, we don't talk about aggressive salespeople. You know, aggression is someone who enjoys, uh, an aggressive person is someone who enjoys harming and hurting others. They're toxic. They're dangerous. No, you do, there, there's almost no situation you can think of in which these people would have a positive contribution to a situation.